Thank you. Such a blessing and privilege to be here, being able to share with you all tonight. Um, it's great, you know, leading worship and seeing all your, all your faces and and um, worshiping the Lord together. But this is uh, another level. This is so like praise the Lord and um, thanks Cheryl for giving me as much time as I like. Um, <laughs> cool. <Go. clears throat> it's fine. Cool, so I'm just going to read some scripture and, and we'll unpack that. Thanks. John 8, 31 to 32. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John fifteen ten. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I've kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. And the third scripture is Psalm 28, 27, verse 8. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Um, so like all good sermons, we have a title. Abide, obey, seek is my title tonight. <laughs> um, cool. So I want to focus on a word that the Lord gave me through these three scriptures. Actually, it was through the first two and then the third one came. Um, afterwards, but um, it lines up with what the Lord was saying to me. And at, at the time he, he gave me this word, I was at my annual work prayer retreat. Um, not many workplaces send you off on a prayer retreat for three days to seek the Lord for what you're doing for him in ministry, um, but I get the privilege to do that at the start of every year. Um, so I work for Scripture Union Queensland and I help to manage school chaplains uh, so at the start of the year, we all get together and we pray and, and we spend time just encouraging each other, seeking God and knowing his heart for, for the next 12 months ahead. Um, so it's usually a focused time of seeking God for our role. Okay, I'm a field development manager and God, what do you want me to do in my job? What is this all about this year? What are you saying to me? And the chaplain's the same, you know, what are you saying to me about my school? Um, you know, I'm, I'm out here in Redcliffe at the hot, local high school. Lord, what are you saying to me about Redcliffe State High School? So we focus, you know, the, generally it's about focusing on those particular things. Um, but this year I really felt strongly as I was praying and seeking God um, that I need a well-balanced, holistic view. Um, meaning that my life is not defined by my job. And seeking the Lord for just my job is only a small part of what happens every day. I wake up, I'm not in my job, I'm at home. Right, when I go to bed, I'm at home. I've got my family, my wife, my daughter. So we're not defined by our jobs. Just the same, we're not defined by our status. I'm married, I'm single got a car, I don't have a car, I rent, I have a mortgage, but quite often we can use those things to define who we are. Just like we can define who we are by our failures. Um, the enemy tries to use that against us. But it says in Romans uh, 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So, really, we're defined by who Jesus is within us. Galatians 2.20 I have now, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And um, we just heard that Ten minutes ago, in our communion time, you know, we give thanks to the Lord for his sacrifice. So, um, so this whole time I'm on the prayer retreat and, and God's speaking to me about this isn't about what you do in your job. This is about your everyday life, who you are holistically. Um, so he spoke to me through the first two scriptures, John eight thirty one and 32 and John fifteen ten. But the Sunday night before I went on the prayer retreat, um, Cheryl was encouraging us um, 
in seeking the Lord. And when I was seeking God at the prayer retreat, he reminded me of what Cheryl was encouraging us with, and that was, um, well, I can't remember exactly what she was saying, but what the Lord was speaking to me at the time was actually seeking his face in prayer, being bold to actually seek him and to go and pray and, and spend time with him. Um, and then that's where Psalm 27 verse 8 came from. I, I was seeking God about, you know, what, what does that look like, you know, in your word? And so he brought out Psalm 27 verse 8. All right. So the things that the Lord was speaking to me through these three scriptures was this is what he wants me to do this year. And so I felt, you know, if sharing this tonight, this is really encouraging for all of us. This is ultimately what the Lord wants from us in our life. Abide in my word, John 8, 31. Keep my commandments, John fifteen ten, And seek my face in prayer, Psalm 27, 8. So I want to look at this word from the Lord for this coming year, for me, but for all of us. And I want to unpack it and hope, hopefully encourage you to abide in the word, to keep his commandments and to seek his face in prayer. And that is to seek the face of Jesus, the one we look to. So before I go any deeper, I want to say that um, when the Lord is asking you to do something um, and you know there's a new level there's a new authority there's um, something deeper that he's taking you in um, the flesh wants to rise up uh, so since I think since about that um, time that the Lord gave me the word everything that is opposite to Galatians 2.20 started happening for me <laughs> So I'm human, um, emotions rise, and you, know, you can probably go and talk to Lisa and she'll let you know of, uh, you know, when, when I'm a bit irritable and stuff like that. <laughs> so also you throw in there um, who I am as a person. I'm a husband, I'm a father, a worship leader, I'm a, a leader in ministry in my job, um, you know, just in everyday life uh, there's people all around you know, who I'm able to encourage and lead and, and uplift. So you put all that together and then, and now I'm preaching, uh, there's certainly a, a new level of, um, well, am I really called to do this, God? I mean, look at me. Like, if, if people out there knew what I was thinking, if they knew what, like, really, who, what's in my heart, um, would they, would they throw stones at me? Probably. <laughs> um, so I'm, I said to the Lord, I can't, I can't do this. I can't preach. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not cut out for this. And He said, well, Why don't you just turn to Hebrews chapter six? <laughs> okay. So I did, and it says, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Dot dot dot. There's a bit more to that, but I only needed that. And if you read the Amplified, it says, Therefore, let us get past the elementary stage in the teachings about Christ, advancing on to maturity and perfection and spiritual completeness. So I hear God say to me that if I want to continue in maturity, then I need to do this. Um, yeah, I need to preach. It's time to stretch. It's time to grow. So um, I say that to encourage you. Like, what is the Lord saying to you? What's... Where are you at in your life? What's the next thing that he's drawing you into? Um, and just ask him and, and he'll lead you to Hebrews 6. <laughs> hey, well, he led me there. <laughs> so Pastor Chris encouraged me when I was um, chatting with him this week. When the Lord requires something of you, there comes a pressing. And what happens when you're getting pressed is things come to the surface. So all this, you know, fleshly stuff that I was seeing in myself is because that's got to come out. God is still working on me, you know, but as we step into that thing that the Lord is, is um, speaking into our life, as we obey, 
then it rises to the surface and he can scoop it out and get rid of it. <laughs> so the closer we get to know him, the more he requires of us. Therefore, this stuff has to come out. So he presses and he highlights and he tests the heart. And in his timing, when he sees we are ready, then he will promote. He will send out. We don't need to seek it. I never came and asked Pastor Chris or Cheryl, hey, I want to preach. Um, I never asked to come up and lead on the worship team. Um, once upon a time I might have, but um, not, not this time. And that's because I believe that the more we seek God, then he's the one that deals with the issues of our hearts and he raises us up. He requires something more of us. So the more we abide in his word, obey his commandments and seek his face, then he brings the increase. So I said, okay, Lord, let's do this. <laughs> I don't know if I was smiling, but I am now. Cool, so let me ask you this. What is the Lord asking you to do that you think that you can't do? So you haven't done anything. You've just sat back. And I know for myself, over the years, the Lord has asked me plenty of times to get up and do something. And uh, I haven't. I've just sat there and done nothing. So I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> So I feel the purpose of this word was to take my focus off of what's required of me through my job and therefore any single part of my life, not just, you know, and focus it first on him, on Jesus. And then out of that, out of focusing on Christ, abiding in his word, obeying what it says to do in his word and seeking his face in prayer, out of that will come answers to my job, when things arise, answers to my family life, when answers to my church life, answers to friends who are in need, answers to whatever it may be that is happening for me right now. And of course it says in Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So I think it's important that seeking first God is... Um, Sorry, it's important that we first seek the Lord. Awesome. So let's look at these three principles I have tonight. And I want to highlight that the point of these words from the Lord is that they apply to every area of our life. There is not one area that these three principles do not affect. If we invest in them and practice and develop into our daily routines as part of our normal everyday life. Let's get uncomfortable with the comfortable things we like to do that steer us away from the Lord. So the first one is abide in my word. If you abide in my word, John 8, 31 and 32, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, I really love the Amplified version. It says, if you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. You'll know the truth regarding salvation and the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin. So abide means to accept in accordance with a rule, decision or recommendation. So then the scripture to me when I read it literally, if we are accept or act in accordance with his word or like the Amplified said, to continually obey the teachings of Jesus and live in accordance with them, we're truly his disciples. Just let that sink in for a minute. So there's two sentences here that use different words, but they mean the same thing. If we accept or act in accordance with his word, or if we continually obey the teachings of Jesus and live in accordance with them, so John 1.14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word became flesh. That is, the word came Christ. He came to life through Jesus. 
So the word is Jesus. Jesus is the word. Colossians 3.16 Let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you. This is amplified again. Uh, Dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being as you teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom. Let the spoken word of Christ, let the word of Christ have its home within you. Does it live in your heart? When you're having conversations with people every day, what's coming out? What are you speaking? Is your mind focusing on the word of God? Are we meditating on it? So that as we speak, as we engage, as we interact with life every day, probably without even knowing, we would be teaching spiritual things to people. Um, In my study Bible, it says, um, study, think about, memorise, believe, live the word of God so that it becomes a part of who you are. Let the word inhabit your conversations with others and your worship of God. Devote yourself to Jesus and knowing his word. (laughs) I mean, I know I'm preaching to the converted, right? As in, most of us, most of the time, not always, you know, we, we do forget, I forget at times, but we love Jesus. You know, we come to school and ministry, we go to prayer meetings, we're here on Sunday night, week in, week out. And, and I know there's some new faces here tonight. But imagine if we devoted every minute of our lives to him. Yeah, like that's... I know I don't do that enough. Um, and I'm up here and I'm preaching and I'm saying this stuff but that's what Jesus wants that's what he so desires his heart is for us to know him and love him and spend time with him I was really encouraged this week on Tuesday night um, Cheryl was just sharing how you know she loves to read the word and before she goes to bed every night she would read the Bible so that when she goes to sleep it's what's going through her mind and I normally read Facebook (laughs) so I was really I was encouraged and challenged so since Tuesday I've been reading my Bible before I go to sleep and but but the funny thing is like I've been telling myself probably for a year or more I should read my Bible before I go to sleep not Facebook so hearing someone else say that really encouraged me to be like, yes, that's, that, is, that is what it's about. Just simple little actions in our life that transform us without even knowing it. Like Facebook, you know. Facebook, my, my status on Facebook doesn't define who I am. I mean, it might look great, right? I was just at the beach or whatever. Um, and probably truly, I might have had a bad day, but I didn't tell you because Facebook doesn't lie, you know, it just tells all the good stories. <laughs> <laughs> so my challenge was to just just forget about it and focus on Jesus. Um, so I read Colossians 3.16 before, but verse 17 says, Whatever you do no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence on him, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if we look at John 8.31 with this in mind, then we can be confident to know that he is saying, if you abide in me, Jesus, 
you are truly my disciples. The emphasis now with this word is to abide in Jesus, spend time in his word, listen to what he is saying, hear his heart, and you will know the way, the truth, and the life that he has for you in all of your life circumstances. If I abide in his word, if I abide in Jesus, he will be the lamp unto my feet as I follow in the way, the truth, and the life. Number two, keep my commandments. So number one was abide in my word. Number two, keep my commandments. John 15.10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Abiding in his love involves our whole being. And the key to obeying his commandments is to love John 14, 15 says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Naturally it will happen if we love him. We naturally desire to follow him if we love him. We want to be obedient to his word, to his teachings and commandments. Now, at the start of last year, um, I was really challenged. So uh, Lisa and I, we, we felt called to come to this church. We were attending another church and um, Lisa met Kylie um, and you know, she was, Kylie was raving about how awesome Fireplace was and so um, we came along a few times and, we, and separately um, on three occasions, one for me and two for Lisa, um, we really felt the Lord tell us that he wants us to plant ourselves here. Um, so that was about August, I think, in 2016. Um, <clears throat> and then at the start of last year, that really, I was really challenged by that very, very thing that the Lord spoke to my heart, to plant myself. He said, family, plant yourself here. Um, and I probably spent three months really wrestling with, did God really say? And, and I looked for, I guess, every, every reason or um, anything I could find to, to rebel against what God really said to me. And I think it was a bit, it was about, it was Easter, oh, Easter? Anyway, it was around April um, last year. So I'd been going through this for three months and I was listening to John Bavia and he was preaching in my car. Um, and I mean, it was so good I had John Bavia right there. <laughs> <clears throat> and, I, and I heard this word and he's preaching and, and in my heart I'm like, yep, God really did say, I want you to plant yourself here. So I listened and it was a two hour drive up to where I was going. And I listened to it again on the way back. And I got home and I said, oh, I think you need to listen to this. I didn't say why <laughs> to Lisa. Because she, she really didn't want to go. It was all just me, you know. So she was supporting um, what was going on, on for me. And uh, so she listened to it and then just kind of looked at me and was like, hmm. <laughs> what do you think it says? You know, she knew it straight away. And I just knew that God hadn't changed what he told me originally. And, and I can either continue in the love that I have for him and obey that command to plant myself here, or I could rebel and go back to whatever I wanted to go back to at the time. Um, but my love for Jesus compelled me to want to stay and obey. And, and I'm so glad I did. Um, I know that, yeah, just, just that... It actually broke something off my life, you know, because for a lot of a lot of the years, a lot of my years, um, I just got caught up running from things a lot. Um, but it was in the obedience to the Lord 
that he was able to break that wall down. Mm. Yeah, I hope that encourages you. Yeah. <laughs> so John fourteen fifteen, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's almost like, yep. Why would you, why would you not want to? Um, so as we love him, we naturally desire to follow him, and be obedient to his teachings and commandments. In Mark 12, 30, 31, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So we see that love is really important to God. Even tonight when we are praying, our crystal brought out the same scripture. Because of the love of Christ how much he loves and cares for us. So um, God's word for love here is agapeo, that's the verb. The noun is agape, but that means unconditional love. So it's a love that we make by choice and act of our will. And he's teaching this from Deuteronomy 10, 12 to 13. It's what it means to truly love. So those two commandments, if we follow them, far away, like the ten commandments that he wrote, back with Abraham, Moses, sorry. Does anyone know? (laughs) Okay, so keeping his commandments requires love. How do we love him? With all our hearts, soul, mind, Strength, And I know the, the four Gospels all have a slightly different version. That was the Mark version, um, which I really like because it in, captures the heart, the soul, the mind and the strength, really our whole being. Deuteronomy 8.1 says, Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore the Lord swore to your fathers every command careful to observe he wants us to invest time in knowing why he's asking us to to follow that particular word why is he saying this in in, um, the gospels why is he encouraging us to do this be careful and and study it and look at it and know um, because the spirit of truth will tell you He who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. That's John 14, 21. He will manifest himself to you or he will make himself known. He will reveal himself to you. Jesus will reveal himself to those who keep his commandments, who love him with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, with all their strength. Sounds easy, right? Sounds simple. Like, yeah, just love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. Easy. But I think that's why we need to abide in his word. We need to abide in Jesus. Because if we don't abide in him, we won't know what his command is. We won't know how to love him like he's calling us to love him. And he'll teach us to obey. And if we get it wrong, there will be correction. It's okay. <laughs> Anyone who's had kids before knows that we do need to correct our children. If anyone's been a child, you've probably been corrected by your mum or dad. <clears throat> but the good thing is, when I discipline my daughter, she knows. And <laughs> this is funny. I always said, I don't want to be that dad who counts one two three right <laughs> but it actually works <laughs> when you when you follow through right when you follow through so she knows if i go one she is off <laughs> because she doesn't um she doesn't want a, a sting in the tail <laughs> lord he will his his word will follow through with what he says. So if we rebel against it or if we go against what his word says, 
there is, there is a consequence. We can guarantee that. We can't avoid it. We have to... Um, I think that's why he teaches us to love. You know, I, I don't correct my daughter in anger. I love her. And, and always, you know, after I've given her time out or whatever it is, um, I always give her a, a hug and tell her I love her and it's okay, you know. And, 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 we and then she says sorry and we move on. And I think the Lord is like that himself. So if I keep his commandments, his favour and grace will be poured out on all areas of my life. And finally, point three, seek my face in prayer. When I say finally, like that doesn't mean I'm nearly finished, probably a little bit. Little bit but I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Um, Psalm 27 verse 8 says, When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. To seek is to diligently look for, to search earnestly. So the Lord's face, that is his presence. And I don't know about you, but like from before we even started tonight, we could feel his presence, you know. And no doubt um, it's still here. Because we seek his face. We seek to want to know him. And if you struggle with that yourself, I really encourage you, come along to one of our prayer meetings. We have one every week. This week is at Pete and Mary's. Next week is Chris and Cheryl's. Once a month we have a combined prayer meeting. Um, we're always praying. And if you want to start a prayer meeting, then just come and see us. <laughs> Cheryl. Jeremiah 29.11, it's on the wall. But the part that's not on the wall is probably the most important part. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and, I'll, and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And verse 14a says, I will be found by you, says the Lord. So yes, that is beautiful. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to give you a future and a hope. But actually requires something of us. How are we going to receive that future and that hope? When we call upon him, when we go and pray, when we seek his face, when we find him, as we search and that's the part when um, when Cheryl was encouraging us a few weeks ago um, like I said I can't remember what she was actually saying but what the Lord was saying to me was um, so but thank you <laughs> <laughs> he was calling me to seek him to seek his face in prayer that were his words to me there, is a, a, there was a requirement for me in that moment. I could stay in my seat and think, yep, I get it. Okay, Lord, you say, seek my face. We've all heard, heard that before. But Jesus, um, yeah, I get it, Jesus. You want me to spend time seeking you in prayer? Yep, I know. But that wasn't going to be enough for me in that moment. There had to be an action to receive the transaction. Jesus was calling me to be bold in seeking him, to step out of my comfort zone, to step out of the normal way of life. It's easy to stand there and, yes, thank you, Jesus, I receive that. But in that moment, God required me to come to the altar and kneel at his feet. So I did. What action do you need to take to receive the transaction of the Lord? To receive that empowerment to continue on? Just like Cheryl was sharing her story about reading the Bible before she goes to bed. Again, what's the, what's the Lord saying to me? I want you to read my word, okay? Okay. Let's do it. Why not? 
Proverbs 8, 17, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Wow. It's right there. All we have to do is do it. All we have to do is seek him diligently. Wow. I think I'm getting transformed right now. <laughs> so am I in love with Jesus enough that I desire to seek him with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength? Well, we would all like to say yes, right? Yes. Yes, I am in love with Jesus enough. Okay. So what can we change when we walk out those doors and go home tonight? Because that's really where it comes down to, right? What am I going to change? Can I keep reading my Bible every night before I go to sleep? I feel the call of Facebook. It's a habit. Colossians 2.6 As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. It's a daily thing. It's a moment thing. It's a continual thing. It's okay when we forget. He never forgets. But let's work at bringing ourselves back to remember him. So as we seek the Lord in prayer, let us be diligent to come and pray. Let us be bold. Step out of our comfort zones. Know that as we seek him, he will be found. We will find him. So to receive a transaction from the Lord, what action are you, is he requiring of you? If I seek his face in prayer, I know him more intimately and I will be able to hear from him more clearly as I follow him through all the areas of my life. So I'm, I'm really glad that um, the Lord gave me those three simple key things. Maybe not so simple. Abide in his word. Obey his commandments. Seek his face in prayer. As we abide in his word, as we obey his commandments, as we seek the Lord in prayer, know that there will be something required of us. By the voice of the Lord, there is a requiring. It should require something of us. We are held accountable for the word of which we hear. James 1.22 But prove yourselves doers of the word. Huh. Actively and continually obeying God's precepts and not merely listeners he who hears the word but fails to internalize what it means remember before we read to carefully look at his commandments we say so who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning deluding yourselves by unsound reason reasoning contrary to the truth as we continually obey the teachings of the Lord and live in accordance with them, we know that we love him. We are transformed. He comes with a little preacher. Hey. <laughs> we are transformed to naturally and instinctively desire to follow him and be obedient to his teachings and commandments. So as we seek him in prayer, the Lord guides us to action. So to hear the word of God is to obey the word of God. That's a good one to write down. She's trying to read my notes. Okay. As we seek him in prayer, I'll say it again, the Lord guides us to action. So to hear the word of God is to obey the word of God. Finally, if I abide in his word, if I abide in Jesus, he will be the lamp unto my feet as I follow him. As I follow him in the way, the truth, the life. 
If I keep his commandments, his favour and grace will be poured out on all areas of my life. And if I seek his face in prayer, I will know him more intimately and I'll be able to hear from him more clearly as I follow him through all areas of my life. Abide in my word, John 8, 31. Keep my commandments, John 15, 10. Seek my face in prayer, Psalm 27, 8. Mm. I encourage you tonight, if the Lord is speaking something to you and, and you're not sure, come to him and, and ask him to show you how. Come to the front and we'll pray for you. Come to the altar, step out, get uncomfortable. Because Jesus loves. And he so much wants to show you that love. <laughs> Just like she's showing me her love. <laughs> Eloise is her name if you don't know. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yeah, so I just encourage you, come out and we'll pray for you. If you have any, any need whatsoever, uh, we'd love to pray for you tonight. But could I encourage you to abide in his word, obey his commandments, and seek his face in prayer. Cool. Thanks. Andrew was saying if you would like prayer uh, we would just love to open up the altar for you to come I just really sense there are people here who when we were singing about more of God your heart just started racing I want that I want more of God I want that fire so I just really wanted to open up specifically for those who want the fire of God you want the more you know that there is more and you want more we want to pray for the fire of his love to uh, encounter you tonight. Um, also, if you need healing, um, we'll get Andrew to pray for you. <laughs> of any kind. Um, that would be awesome if you want to come up for prayer. Quick announcement I forgot, really important. Next week is potluck dinner. So we do that once a month. So you can bring anything, um, and preferably anything that can be microwaved or crock potted because we don't have a stove. Uh, you can bring your own crock pot. Yes. Uh, Please let us.